Hey y'all, one of the things that I think we're beginning to realize or coming to, you know, we're, we're confronted with right now um, with all of the virus stuff is our own weakness. And we think that we have control of things, that we think that we're powerful, we think that we decide what to do and what not to do. And in just a matter of like a week, maybe even less than that, our lives were, com were turned completely upside down by an invisible microscopic enemy. It just reminds us of our weakness as human beings. And it's good to be reminded of our weakness as human beings because it's good to be reminded that we're not God. Um, that there's only one God and we are not Him. Um, Paul, in his own meditation on his weakness, he had a some kind of physical disability, or he called it a thorn in the flesh, and he prayed over and over again for it to be removed, and God did not take it away. God's answer was no. Uh, just as a side note, you know, we talk a lot about unanswered prayer. Sometimes God does answer our prayers, and the answer is no. Uh, no is still an answer. It may not be an answer we like, but it's still an answer for our good. Well, Paul prays about the removal of this thorn in the flesh, and God tells him no. Maybe you've prayed about the ending of uh, having to stay at home, and, and maybe you've prayed about the return to your normal routine, your normal life, pray that this virus would end, and God's answer right now seems to be no. Well, what does Paul do with that when God tells him no? This is what God says to him, what Jesus says to him in that moment when he asks for him to remove it, and God responds no. Instead, he says this, but Jesus said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. And then it says a little bit later on, For when I am weak, then I am strong. When we come to the end of ourselves, when we recognize that we are not the ones who control the world, that we are not the ones who control everything from a physical standpoint, and even more so than that, we're not the ones who control the world from a spiritual standpoint, that we can't save ourselves, that we can't wake ourselves up in the morning, that we can't give ourselves another heartbeat, that we can't uh, make ourselves right with God. When we recognize that, and really, instead of running away from it, like is our tendency to do, especially as Westerners, as, as Americans. We want to be strong. We want to be bold. We want to show that we can stand up to anything. Jesus calls us to enter into our weakness because it, it's when we recognize that we are weak, that we are in need, that Jesus meets us there in that need, that he tells us, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. And so that we can, instead of covering up our weaknesses, we can actually boast about it. That we can, we can recognize that when we are weak, we are strong. We are strengthened by the power that is in Christ. So as uncomfortable as this is, as much as we want to run away from this, God calls us, Jesus invites us to lean into our weakness so that, like Paul, we can have a deeper, richer experience of him. What a wonderful invitation, even in the midst of all this craziness and darkness and sadness that's going on right now. So that's my encouragement for you today. Uh, lean into your weakness. Lean into your dependence and into your need because Jesus meets us in that need. The only requirement that we need to come to Jesus is to recognize our need for Jesus and he'll take care of the rest.